read from Psalm 23. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. You know, just to come to this, this message tonight, just a short word before we come to prayer. You know, this is, this is once again a prayer meeting for a new pastor. And, you know, the title I've got for this evening is The God of the Mountain is the God of the Valley. And, you know, when it comes to mountaintop experiences, you know, whether that is physically or spiritual, I think the, the, the comparisons are quite the same. You know, when you climb, when you get to the top of the mountain, there's an exhilaration that you have, that you've made it to the top. And I, and I know that when we are in, we've experienced God's blessing upon our lives, when we've been in the blessing, there's a tremendous excitement at what God has done and, and where we are and what we're experiencing. You know, when you are at the top of a mountain on a clear day, you can see very clearly, very, you have a very clear vision before you. You can see for miles and miles around. And you know, the air is fresh and there's a, there's a stillness and a, a quietness away from the, biz, the busyness from the, you know, the town and the cities. There's a tremendous, beautiful quietness. And spiritually speaking, we can experience that and have experienced that when we have had, we've been on the mountain. Um, and we feel God is really blessing us. We feel that God is, is answering our prayers. And there's a tremendous excitement when we see how God is moving and we see what God is doing and there's, a, and there's an excitement. And again, in these moments, we really have a very clear vision of, of what God is doing, of where we are and where we're going in God's plan. And it seems a wonderful a wonderful time of, of blessing and a, a tremendous peace, tremendous peace in our heart that we know that God is moving in a very, very special way. And sometimes when we're in that mountaintop, it feels that we'll always be there. You know, that God's blessing us and God's moving in a special way. And we think this is where we're, we're going to be here forever. This is, the, this is the experience that we're always going to have. But, you know, as the Lord, as the Lord reminds us that there will, be, there will be difficult times, there will be trials, we'll be hated, and there'll be all sorts of trials and persecutions. And sometimes we find ourselves in the valley. Sometimes we find ourselves not through sin, not through disobedience, but just through circumstances. We find ourselves in the valley. And in the valley, it's, it can be very hard to get out of the valley. It can be a place where we don't see very far ahead. All we see is, is the signs of the valley. And it can seem sometimes when we're down here that perhaps we'll always be down here. There doesn't look as if there is any way that this situation or the way we feel is, is going to change, that we are stuck in this, we're stuck in this valley. And as we read in Psalm 23, we read that, you know, sometimes we will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But as I say, the God who is with us in the blessing is the God who is with us in the trials, and the God who is with us in the valleys. And as we come to pray for a pastor tonight, you know, I know sometimes this meeting can be a difficult meeting in comparison to the other meetings that we have. Sometimes we can come to this meeting and feel that this is a hard, this can be sometimes a hard meeting. We've prayed for, for such a long time um, and we come to pray the same things again. And sometimes we can, sometimes we come with tremendous excitement to this meeting, uh, but sometimes we can come in with a feeling of we're here again, we're praying. There hasn't been an answer. There is no, there's no answer on the horizon. But again, we've come tonight because we believe God. We've come tonight because we, we believe that we're in the will of God and that God is with us. And thinking back to when our pastor was with us, you know, we had many mountaintop blessings. You know, our pastor's ministry was, was absolutely fantastic. He was a man who was anointed of God and there was tremendous blessings. There was tremendous experiences, um, supernatural experiences under our pastor's ministry. And we were in that blessing. And again, 
in that moment, it seemed like this would this would last forever. There would be no end to this. And that's not to say that during that time there wasn't valley experiences because there were. There was trials, there was difficulties, there was many enemies. There was much opposition. But we had tremendous blessings. But that's not to confuse our situation tonight that I'm saying that we're in the valley um, and there's no blessings because, you know, since the pastor was taken home, you know, obviously at that time it was a tremendous blow to us because none of us, we were praying for the pastor's healing at that time. We were praying and we had, we really thought he would be healed. And again, that was a tremendous blow to us all in the loss of our pastor. And it was difficult times, but it's true to say that God has blessed us in this period. Although it has been a long period, God has blessed us and there has many, there have been and are many blessings. Even of recently, we've looked at the, the answers to prayer that God has given us and how God has has brought us through, has brought us through this time and, and we see God's hand upon us. So there's 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 no doubt about it. We in our lives we do experience highs and we experience lows. But we see that, that in all of these situations, God is still with us. Even when we we don't perhaps see the Lord's hand, we know that the Lord, the Lord's hand is upon us and the Lord is truly with us. And I just like to look just for the time that we've got, just at Joseph. You no, know, Joseph was a man who knew the mountaintop. Joseph was, and his at the beginning of his life, at the beginning of where Joseph comes into uh, into the Word of God in, in Genesis chapter, in Genesis chapter thirty seven, we see that Joseph was greatly loved, greatly loved by his father. Um, and again, I'll just read Genesis thirty seven verse three. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colours. And we see that what a blessing this was for Joseph to, to be so specially loved by his father, to be given this coat of many colours. These were tremendous blessings for Joseph. And on top of that, in verse 5, and Joseph dreamed a dream. And we see that God's blessing was upon Joseph's life. Joseph would receive these incredible dreams from God, incredible things that he was going to do they were going to happen in his life. And at that moment, it seemed like what a wonderful, what a wonderful experience, what a wonderful time it was for Joseph. But just as, as we've mentioned, on the mountaintop, on the blessing, there's no problems are not far away. And despite the, the blessings that Joseph had experienced, there were still problems because we see that in between verses three and five of these two blessings, we see verse four, and his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, and they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And here we start to get the, the, the sense that although there was blessings in Joseph's life, the problems weren't far away. And as, as Joseph, as the chapter goes on, we see again the brothers' anger and hatred increases towards Joseph. And as you know, we know the story, so I won't go through every single part of the story, but we know. As Joseph goes to meet his brothers, we just see how, how deep, you know, their hatred towards him was. And in verse 18, and when they saw him far off, even before he came nigh near unto them, they conspired against him that they might slay him. Here we see, you know, such is the anger towards, that is, that is built up against Joseph, that his brothers are quite prepared now to kill Joseph when they see him coming towards them. And we see that Joseph went from this experience of being on the mountaintop to being very quickly in the valley. And we see that even in our own lives, we can we can be in the blessing and we can seem like this is we're in God's blessing is God's blessing as a us. But very quickly that can change and we can find ourselves in trials and difficulties that we perhaps couldn't have envisaged, never expected to happen. But all of a sudden they are now very much upon us. I know we see by verse 23 that Joseph has went, he's been stripped of his coat, he's been beaten by his brothers and thrown, thrown in a pit. And again, this would be the start of the valley. This would be the start of the valley for Joseph. And I say, as I say, sometimes when we we find ourselves in the valley, when we're going through difficult times and trials, at times it can seem like there is no end. There's no end to these. When, how will this? How will this situation change? How will we get back to the mountaintop? It seems, it can seem quite far away. 
And you know that things would get, as we know the story, things would get worse for Joseph. He would be sold. He would be sold as a slave by his brothers into, into Egypt. And as I say, in these times, it can be very difficult to see where things will improve. For Joseph, things had just seemed to get very worse. It seemed to get worse very quickly. And we're continuing to be so. But we must remember, as I said, that the God of the mountain is the God of the, the God of the valley. And Joseph knew that God, that God was with him. Because even in this situation, as a slave in Egypt in, in, in Genesis chapter 39 and verse 2, and the Lord was with Joseph. You know, the Lord had never left Joseph, even although for Joseph the blessing, the blessing um, and the love of his father seemed to be so far away now. And the dreams that God had given him seemed to be far, far away in his situation. The Lord was never far away. The Lord was with Joseph. And you know, if we perhaps find ourselves in a valley situation tonight, we can encourage ourselves that the Lord is with us. And perhaps we come to this meeting tonight and we find we find this meeting a hard meeting. We think, what will we pray that we haven't prayed? Where is the pastor coming from? Where is the end to this situation? And although there are many blessings in this situation of a pastor, that is something that we are still we're still missing. And it can seem quite difficult, but we must encourage ourselves. As just as Joseph knew the Lord was with him, that the Lord is truly with us, brothers and sisters in Zion Baptist Church, that God is with us and God will continue with us. And we see that Joseph never gave up in the valley. Joseph never gave up in the situation. Joseph, Joseph worked hard, even in a slave in Egypt. He worked and he served well and he was found favour with Potiphar and, and he, his situation Although he was still in that situation, he improved his situation. He was well thought of in, in the home of Potiphar. But as we know, that, that too would change to Potiphar's wife, and Joseph would find himself, would find himself in a worse situation. And in, in chapter 20 of 39, chapter 39, and Joseph's master, master took him and put him in prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. And again, we see that. Instead of things improving, although Joseph is trusting the Lord, things are getting steadily worse from, from when he was out that day with his, with his coat on um, to meet his brothers. He now finds himself in a prison in a strange land, accused of a, of a terrible crime. But once again, we see in the next verse, but the Lord was with Joseph. Even in the prison, the Lord was with Joseph. And perhaps we as I say, find ourselves in difficulties and troubles, we know that the Lord is still with us. The God of the mountain is the God of the valley. And while we're in the blessing, you know, it seems wonderful. We know God is with us. What we must remember is that when we're in the trials and we're in the difficult times, the Lord is still with us. The Lord has never left us, nor has the Lord forsaken us. And as the story goes on, we know the story eventually in the prison, the butler and the baker, are put in the prison with Joseph, and Joseph will tell them their dreams. And we see that Joseph, Joseph's desire was that he would be free. Joseph's desire, even in these, these situations, that one day he would be free from the prison. And, and, and as he speaks to the butler in, in Genesis 14, verse 14, and he says, But think on me, when it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee, unto me, I make mention of me unto Pharaoh and bring me out of this house. Here we see Joseph in these situations. You know, he wasn't content just to be there. And although God's blessing, he, was, he had a desire to get out of that situation, a desire to be free. And his desire was just, was just that, to be free. And we know that in the story that the butler forgets Joseph. And it's another two years that he finds himself in that place. And perhaps... When the butler was free, Joseph thought, well, this will be this will be it. He will, will remember me, and perhaps in a few days' time, um, somebody will come and, and get me out of this situation. And as the days passed and the months passed and the, and a year passed, it be, would become clear to Joseph that the butler had indeed forgotten him. And sometimes when we come, we can sometimes feel that the Lord has the Lord forgotten us. Has the Lord forgotten our situation? If the Lord had remembered us, why would we still be praying for a pastor? If the Lord was, 
If the Lord is with us, then why are we in this situation? And we see that in Joseph's situation that God had a plan and God had a purpose that was much greater than what Joseph could have possibly ever imagined. And you know that we see that in two years' time, Pharaoh has a dream and nobody can tell the dream and the butler remembers he remembers Joseph. He remembers this man who told him his dream. And Joseph is brought before Pharaoh. And here we see, you know, Joseph, all Joseph really wanted was to be free. He never had any anything more than that. But God had a greater plan for Joseph than just to be free from prison. Joseph would go from the prison to be the prime minister, to be a ruler in Egypt. And, you know, as we come to pray tonight before God, you know, we, see we have a God who can do it above, far and above all we can ask or think. You know, we think what we pray for tonight seems to be, seems to be, it can seem difficult at times, yet what God can do will, will astound us. What God can do and what God's plan is is far greater than perhaps we could ever envisage as we pray for a pastor tonight. And we will look back when God has answered and we'll think, remember we just prayed for a pastor. Look what God has done. Look what God has done. We just thought if we could have a pastor and a shepherd to lead us and God has done so much more. And God done so much more for Joseph, more than he could ever have imagined as he was in that prison. And you'll think as they, at the time as they bring Joseph from the prison, he was the man that they, that they didn't know they needed. But he was the man very much that, they would, that would lead them through, through the famine, through the difficulties, and through the blessing. There would, be, there would be the seven years of plenty, and Joseph would be the man for that. And you know, as Joseph reveals the dreams, Pharaoh says to his servants in Genesis 41 and 38, and Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? I know, brothers and sisters, as we come to pray, that's what we pray for. We pray that we would say, can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And that will be our pastor. That will be, as we saw in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Well, we're praying for an under-shepherd a man in whom the Spirit of, of God is, a man who will lead us through the blessings, through the mountaintops, through the valleys, a man who God has called, and a man who God has prepared. Because as you see in Joseph's life, all that he experienced, God used these experiences to prepare Joseph for what he would do next in his life. And we pray that, that tonight, that there is a man that God is preparing for our church, a man that God is preparing and bringing through. And... Well, we have our story and our side of, of our time of prayer for this man. I'm sure when, when, when the Lord brings the man of God for Zion, that he too will have a story of how God has prepared him, how God brought him through different things to bring him to, to, to our church. Because we, we thank God and we praise God tonight that whether we're in the blessing or whether we're in the valley, God is with us. And tonight, you know, as we come to pray, let us pray in faith. Let's pray believing that, that we know that God is with us. We know that God has blessed us even in, even in these years, even in these, these many years we've been praying for a pastor. God has continued to bless us. God has continued to bring people to the church. We've seen people come to, to know the Lord as our Savior. We've seen answers to prayer. We're praying for many people even tonight. And already we've seen answers in, in some of these situations. And we know that God is hearing our prayers. And that's, that should be, as it was for Joseph, a tremendous encouragement that God has got a plan, that God has got a time to his plan, and we're, we're in that plan. And that's the wonderful thing, to know that we're, we're still in God's plan. God has plans for us. God has things for us to do, things for our church to do. And, and we tonight are being part of that plan as we pray. As we pray tonight, we know that God hears our prayers. We know that God not only hears our prayers, but God can do far greater than what we pray for tonight, far greater than we can even imagine tonight. So let's pray with faith. Let's pray believing that we will see these things. And as we pray for a pastor, let us also remember for those that we are praying for, that God will, will move in these situations and do far greater than perhaps even we hope or think. You know, we've been praying for some people and we just prayed that, we prayed that the Lord would undertake in these situations, but we've been amazed. We've been amazed as we've seen people leave hospitals who were in hospitals to die. And again, we see that that's what God can do. God has a plan and God has a purpose. So let us thank God that we're part of that and we're part of that tonight as we come to pray. Amen. Lord, we, we thank you tonight.